Hi, I want to explain a grammar, grammar topic. So the topics I'm going to explain are congruence, ing forms, and genitive. I'm going to start by, by congruence, that is um, when you have to have a correspondence between verb and subject in a sentence. As said before, the verb should match the subject in the sentence, and to do so, you have to add an S to the verb in third person singular position. Um, the other persons are all the same. As you can see in the table, we have ver the verb speak, and it's the same for all the persons, but the third person singular, there's an S added. Is, it's also the same for the verb wash and cry, but the difference between them is that for speak, there's added only S, for wash, there's an added an ES, and for cry, there's added an IES. But when do we add them and how to know when to add which one? So there are three rules um, to tell when to add. S, ES, and IES. So the first rule is that when the verb uh, when the verb ends with S, H, Q, Q, Z, and most of the verbs that end with that ends with O, they get an ES. It's the examples are for example pass, which is he passes, mix that is like he mixes. Blush, um, to blush, like he blushes, and to do, he does. The second rule is um, called Y rule, and it is that when the verb ends with a constant and Y, then you remove the Y and um, you remove, you add an I instead of the I instead of the Y, and add an ES. For example, the verb to fly becomes he flies with um, that's spelled like F L I E S. Or the verb deny is he denies. The third rule is that just basically every other word, every other verb that doesn't um, go with the rule one and rule two just gets an S. And we have to be we have to make uh, we have to pay attention to the verb play that ends with a with y but we can see that before y there's an a which is not a constant and therefore it doesn't go with the rule number two but the rule number three that it just becomes play like plays like um they um like he plays or she plays The rule about that the verb change form in the third person singular applies to almost every verb in English, but there are 10 special verbs that doesn't change their form um, or like change their forms in other way for third person singular. These um, 10 verbs are, 8 of them are modal verbs that are can, may, must, shall, will, ought to, dare, and need. <coughs> and the other two are to be and to have. Modal verbs do not get, um, you do not change their form for third person singular, um, and they just stay the same. But the verb there and need are also main verbs, which means that when they are used as main verbs, then they get an S or they change their forms. Um, you can see the examples here that um, the first example is who dares to argue with me about that here there's here the verb there gets an s and it's because uh, in the sentence the verb is used as main verb but in the second um, sentence we have he dare not tell his father about his drinking problems and here the verb there is a modal verb and therefore it doesn't get, get changed and the second, the third sentence is, need he tell his father about it? And here need is a modal verb, and therefore it doesn't um, get an S. 
But in the last sentence, we have he needs to see his doctor next week. And here need is, an, is a main verb and therefore it gets an S. And, but what about the other two verbs? Um, they change their form um, differently and therefore they don't go with the other rules, like the three rules we talked about earlier. So how do they get how do they change their form? You can see in the table below that the verb to be becomes um, am or is or 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 for the um, present tense. And for the past tense it becomes um, was where was and where for the plural persons. And the verb have and um, to have, it just becomes have, but in the third person um, singularities, it becomes has. And it's all, um, for the past tense, it just had all the way down. Um, there are sort of three subjects um, that are, for example, um, there are sometimes nouns that are not plural but we always use them as plural and therefore when we use an we use a verb for them it's um it changes form um as the plural person for example police and pe police and people for example you cannot say people is talking it's always people are talking or um, the second one, the second point is that nouns that are always used in singular form, no matter where in the sentence they are or how they are used, they are always singular, and the, therefore the verb should also be um, should also match the singular form. For example, um, money, information, furniture, advice, news, and progress. Um, an example could be the information is on the news, no matter if there are plural information or just one, it's just always the information is on the, on the news or just the information is on the paper. The second point is um, pronouns that end with body, one, and thing. They are always used as third person singular. For example, somebody is watching me or like someone has written a song or something is moving. Um, as you can see, I use the verbs as the third person singular, like someone is um, watching or something is moving and someone has written a song. The last point is that um, there could be some times where even if the subject is in th um, third person singular, but they can, there can be situations where um, there's no need to add an um, add a ES to the verb. Um, it applies, for example, to um, hypothesis and wishful thinking. You can see in the example below that, for example, it's essential that he be here. So that um, you can see the verb be is um, doesn't change the form, even though he is sing um, third person singular. The second um, grammar point I'm going to um, explain is ing form, which is the which is used for the continuous tense, and is formed by adding um, by having be um, the verb to be plus the um, the root of the verb plus ing. As said before, ing form is used for continuous tense, which shows an action that is, was, or will be in progress at a certain time. And it's either in the past, present, or the future. And it's formed uh, with the verb be plus the root of the verb um, plus ing, or like we just call it ing form of the verb. There are three different times. The first one is present, 
which is the present continuous tense or um, present progressive tense. And it is um, an action that is happening currently the, in the present. The example is like, I'm having dinner at the moment. Like I'm sitting and eating dinner. Then you use an ing form and you can see am is the verb to be for the first person plus um, ing form of the verb having of the verb have. The second time is the past continuous tense, which refers, of course, refers to an um, action that happened um, that was happening at some point in the past. Like I was having dinner when Sarah called. Like um, the action was taking place in the past, and then suddenly something happened that caused to stop the um, the action. Like in the example is that when Sarah Sarah called me. The third time is future continuous, and as it can be um, guessed by the name, it's when something um, occurs in the future and continues for an expense, expanded length of time. It's formed by adding will plus be plus ing form of the verb. Um, for example, we have, I will be having dinner at my parents' house tomorrow. So we have um, will plus um, be plus the ing form of verb have. Um, but where do we use ing form? There are different cases um, that ing form is used. Um, it's not only used for verbs, but also for nouns. For example, meeting, building, or like smoking. An example could be like, smoking is bad for you. Here, smoking is a noun, but it can also be used as a verb. For example, he is smoking, and it's the continuous tense. Um, the second place where um, ing form can be used is for adjectives, <clears throat> for example, swimming pool or a crying baby. Um, again, you can change that to a verb by saying the baby is crying or the baby was crying. Um, the second position that you can use ing form is for adverbs. Like the soup was burning hot. Here, the burning is an adverb, is the sentence. Um, ing form can also be used for prepositions, like regarding. For example, I send an email regarding next week's um, like next week's schedule. Um, ing form can also be used for conjunctions. For example, assuming he's still alive, how old would he be now? Here, assuming is a conjunction um, they can also be used for um, after um, they can also be used after a preposition like he is very good at playing piano here um, playing is used after at which in Danish it refers to the infinitive form um, so yeah ing form can also be used instead of infinitive in Danish um, but um, there are also some <coughs> expression and special certain adjectives that ing form is used. For example, um, they are written here: busy, worth, no good, no use, feel like, can't help, and can't stand. After these um, adjectives, um, we use ing form of the yeah we use ing form. For example, um. Here I have two examples. For example, he is busy reading the newspaper. Here we have the adjective busy and reading comes after busy, so we use ing form. Or I feel like taking the day off. Um, I feel like taking the day off. So feel like is an adjective um, is an adjective and taking comes after it, so it's in the it should be in the ing form. The second and the third and last one is genitive, and it's the positive case. Um, 
which is used to show ownership. There are different types of genitive. For example, we have apostrophe genitive where we use the apostrophe mark S or sometimes only apostrophe mark. Um, apostrophe mark S is used for the words that um, don't, doesn't have an S. For example, Lena's book and apostrophe, apostrophe without S is used for words that already ends with an with a S. For example, my parents' house. The second type is of genitive where we have the thing that's owned plus of plus the owner for example the roof of the house it's used in it can be used in different um concept for example for months and dates where we have we say for example in the month of october or the first of april it can also be used for geographical names for example the kingdom of denmark the last one is um, personal pronouns, where, for example, we, can, we say, this is my phone, or we can also say the phone is mine. In the table below, we, say, we, see, we can see that how the persons change to their personal pronouns. My becomes mine, your become yours, his become his, her become hers, it is the same, our become ours, their, theirs, whose, whose. Yes, that was my presentation.